And Questions? we need specific figures, and I think I've been trying to do Tara? Yeah, thank you, uh, Corrie Um Yes, look, at, I, I'd undertake to see what we can get specifically for this end. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Uh, second motion, Senator Cahill. I'm going to thank the Minister for coming to the House today. Um, recently, I've been asked to help with a number of cases specifically around the issue of domestic violence and abuse. And one case is that of a woman in her 50s who was resident in council accommodation for over 30 years. And I don't want to identify this woman due to the very real danger that she may find herself in, and obviously owing to the obvious sensitivities. But she did find herself in a situation where she had to leave her home recently. Um, after decades of domestic violence and due to the impending closure of the emergency accommodation she is in, will find herself homeless two weeks before Christmas. Um, she will also find herself down the housing list as a result, having never missed a payment of rent on the council house that she has owned for over 30 years. Domestic violence affects thousands of people in this country, as you know, and an environment needs to be created to encourage victims to leave the danger that they're in. 207 women have been murdered in Ireland since 1996. In 2014 alone, Women's Aid heard 595 disclosures of sexual abuse, including 176 disclosures of rape made by partners or ex-partners. During all of the contacts made with Women's Aid, over 16,000 disclosures of emotional, physical, sexual and financial abuse were made. And it's with this in mind, Minister, that I ask you to outline how cases are prioritised in the system and if the introduction of a verified points-based system would enable those most in need to achieve safe, secure and permanent housing rather than taking cases by date order or separation of lists so that there is a tangible way of measuring need. Victims deserve protection from domestic violence and due to the increasing burden on voluntary organisations who do a great job in providing emergency accommodation, I would ask that the Minister considers a new approach to the allocation of housing. Thank Thank you, uh, Kirilok, and I again want to thank the Senator for raising this um, issue, this very serious issue, which unfortunately continues to be of light on our society and has a serious impact on victims and indeed on their families as well. It's important to note, perhaps at the outset, that housing authorities do not provide or oversee services specifically designed for victims of domestic violence. Responsibility for the development and provision of those services to support victims of domestic abuse rests with the Minister for Children and Youth Affairs and the delivery of such services is managed through the Child and Family Agency, TUSLA. Victims of domestic violence who seek emergency accommodation from a housing authority are generally placed in temporary accommodation which the Council itself arranges or which is operated by a voluntary service provider. It is not necessary for such persons to go on the general housing waiting list to avail of short-term emergency housing. Such support can be provided where victims of domestic violence meet the homeless definition set out in the Housing Act 1988, which is not prescriptive and in practice will generally include victims of domestic violence. Where victims of domestic violence need continued state, agent, state support to meet their housing needs, housing authorities are encouraged to work with the service providers to ensure that a victim's housing eligibility and need is assessed in a timely manner. This assessment is carried out in accordance with Section 20 of the Housing Miscellaneous Provisions Act 2009 and the Associated Social Housing Assessment Regulations 2011, which includes a review of the suitability of the household's current accommodation having regard to a number of considerations, including particular household circumstances or on exceptional medical or on compassionate grounds. This allows a housing authority to consider a victim of domestic violence as having a housing need and allowing them to be placed on a housing list where all other criteria are met. The allocation of social housing support to qualified households is a matter for individual housing authorities in accordance with their allocation schemes under Section 22 of the 2009 Act. Each housing authority is required to make an allocation scheme specifying, among other things, the manner of and the order of priority for the allocation of dwellings to household and classes of household on the waiting lists. 
Allocation schemes may also contain provisions for exceptional or emergency cases, allowing immediate housing outside of normal waiting list priorities should the circumstances warrant it. While the allocation of support is a matter for the individual local authorities, the 2009 Housing Act provides that the Minister may issue directions to a housing authority regarding the operation of an allocation scheme, and the housing authority is required to comply with such direction. Using this power, Minister Kelly issued a direction which applies until 31 January 2016 to key local authorities, requiring them to prioritise homeless and other vulnerable households in the allocation of tenancies under their control. Victims of domestic violence that are either considered homeless by the Housing Authority or are in accommodation that is considered unsuitable on exceptional medical or compassionate grounds and are qualified for social housing support on or before the 1st of June 2015 may benefit under this direction. I am satisfied that the current provisions and arrangements in place provide local authorities with appropriate mechanisms to ensure that sufficient priority is afforded to victims of domestic violence and other vulnerable groups. In addition to the current provisions in place which allow for the adequate prioritisation of victims, my department is involved in a number of initiatives which support victims. Under my department's capital assistance scheme, support may be provided through the local authorities towards approved housing bodies costs in providing accommodation for persons that are qualified for social housing supports that may have particular accommodation needs. There are a number of approved housing bodies which have an emphasis on providing suitable accommodation to victims of domestic violence. It is a matter for individual housing authorities to prioritise the projects to be advanced under the Capital Assistance Scheme. Furthermore, COS, the National Office for the Prevention of Domestic, Sexual and Gender-Based Violence, which was established in 2007 as an executive office of the Department of Justice and Equality, works to ensure the delivery of a coordinated response to issues of domestic, sexual or gender-based violence across government. My department continues to liaise with COS in relation to the development of a second national strategy on domestic, sexual and gender-based violence, which should be finalised shortly. While there is no proposal to redefine victims as a specific category of prioritised housing need, my department will commit under this strategy to develop guidance for housing authorities to ensure effectiveness and consistency in local authority responses for victims of domestic violence. Thank you, Minister. Any questions, Senator? Yeah, thank you very much, Minister. <clears throat> and, you know, I welcome the answers, and it's a very comprehensive answer today. I note um, with some concern that the direction made by the Minister only extends to the 31st of January 2016. Um, obviously, um, I would be calling on that to be extended for much longer. I mean, we're talking about the need to remove the barriers to those who need to leave their homes urgently. We're not talking about emergency accommodation, but long-term safe and secure accommodation. And with that in mind, um, while all of this is very welcome, I believe that a national direction should be given to have a systematic joined-up approach and some sort of regulated uniform thinking among those allocating housing to assessed solely based on need. And this is one category of victims which absolutely um, should be based on, on high-priority housing need. Um, so could we have a commitment, please, for some degree of creative thinking in relation to nationally and not taking the problems um, and, and having those dealt with locally? Because clearly in the case that I am dealing with, it isn't working. Uh, thank you, Cahirlock. And um, uh, I'm mindful that um, you know that sometimes you know housing um, bodies have. We need them to have a degree of flexibility. Um, so that they can, I often say that, uh, you know, a local solution to a local problem is probably the best way to go. If I could assist the Senator maybe that perhaps uh, we might, um, seeing as how uh, the Department is liaising with uh, COS in developing a second national strategy on domestic, sexual and gender-based violence, which will be finalised uh, shortly, perhaps we might wait and see... Um, or the Senator might wait and see maybe what that strategy contains and maybe we, we will commit to work uh, with uh, the Minister to see how we can maybe um, you know, get a, a better uh, recognition of um, domestic violence in, the, in that strategy. 
I'm mindful of not waiting things against, the, you know, sometimes when we make changes, we have to be careful, is there a, an unintended consequence for another cohort of people? So I'm just conscious of that. Uh, so maybe we just wait and see what the strategy says and we'll continue to work on it. Okay, thank sure. you. Okay. Third motion in the name of Senator John Kelly. I'd like to welcome Minister.